Hello, welcome to my channel VTech Vlog, a place where you would find suggestions regarding gadgets and vehicles based on my personal experience. Today we have the tank on the wheels from Maruti Suzuki, the Maruti Ritz ZDI. This is my first buddy, so I'm having this for last two years and have clocked more than 30,000 kilometers. And with the odd experience, I am capable of reviewing it and uh, telling you about all the cons and pros about this particular vehicle. So let's get started with the specs and overview first. The video would be divided into two parts, mainly as the physical overview and specifications and then pros and cons and should you buy one or not. So that would be covered in the pros and cons. On the specs ground, it has major two powertrains, a 1.2 litre petrol and a 1.3 litre diesel. In the 1.2 litre petrol, I have the diesel one. So in the 1.2 litre petrol, we have the 1197cc uh, four cylinder 16 valve engine, which is VVT K series engine, which turns out 86 bhps at 6000 rpm and 114 newton meters of torque at 4000 rpm respectively and in the diesel we have the 1.3 liter ddis engine which is also seen in the punto that turns out 74 bhp at uh, 4000 rpm and 119 newton meters of torque at uh, 2000 rpm the turbo kicks in at early 1500 rpm so once you hit the 1500 band you would feel a surge of power beyond that so in the fifth gear when you are at the 80 speed and you just tap the accelerator, you would feel a surge of torque coming on to the 1500 RPM beyond to the uh, 3000 and uh, 3500 RPM mark. In the petrol motor, we have option to go with the automatic transmission, which has a four speed automatic. We do have a manual transmission in uh, petrol. In the diesel, sadly, we don't have any automatic transmission. We only have the manual transmission, the five speed manual. Even we don't have the six gear in the automatic, so the flexibility is not so great like the i20s on the ground we have the 185 uh, by 70 r14 tires at the top end variants and in the base and the mid range we have the 165 80 r14 tires uh, that is the jk vectra they have supreme in group uh, uh, not compared with the michelin but they are fairly capable of doing 30,000 kilometers at the front we have the ventilated disc at the rear we have the drum the front suspension setup is McPherson struts with coil spring at the rear we have a coil spring with torsion beam so now it's turn for the overall dimension in the length we have the length from nose to tail that's 3775 millimeters the width it is along with the side moldings it's 1680 millimeters the height as this is a tall boy design uh, the uh, height is 1620 millimeters the wheelbase is a 2360 millimeters and the ground clearance is 170 millimeters which is not too high this is very good for the high speed stability on the curve weight in the petrol we have uh, 1030 kilograms and in the diesel we have 1145 kilograms the gross vehicle weight the gross vehicle weight refers to all the weight along with the chassis body and a full five occupants and the luggage the loading capacity with all the occupants is 1400 uh, 30 for the petrol variant and 1550 for the diesel variant the fuel tank capacity for both the petrol and the diesel is 43 liters let's check what it offers on the exterior at first we have the suzuki logo split radiator grill mount for the number plate a large enough headlamp integrated with the uh, turn indicator fog lamp that is the comfort convenience and the security feature this is very beneficial in daily foggy condition then we have the well sculpted bonnet front wipers that's obvious in a car a windshield let's come here then we have the eight spoke alloy wheel along with the 18570 r14 tire because mine one is the zdi variant we do have a turning and uh, turn indicator here with the ddis badging we don't have a turn indicator on the ovrm because this feature is not available in the rids then we have the body colored grab handle to open the door this these are the side moldings uh, the shoulder line is not so intimidating it's a normal shoulder line just going all the way from the uh, front door to the uh, tail section so this is the boomerang shape at the back the looks are subjective someone don't like mine i just love this vehicle i mean this is a hatchback so the back should be hatched uh, the tail lamp is very large and very eye-catching on the highways then we have the chrome badging for the reds 
Marcia Suzuki and the variants and the ABS. Uh, the variants here are the ZDI, VDI. I have removed that. Uh, then we have the spoiler, a 3D light for brake, a defogger, a defogging lights, a reflector, a rear wiper which is only available in the top end variants and the defogging lines which is beneficial in the foggy condition. Then we have the uh, petrol lid here which is a 43 liters in capacity. Let's see how the boot space is. We don't need to uh, switch the boot, uh, boot gate from the uh, interior of the dashboard. We have a grab handle for this too. This is the switch like you are having a keyless entry car. So this is the boot space. This is 30, uh, 236 liters in capacity. This is the parcel tray. And after this uh, big enclosure from the Sony, I have enough space to load two American touristers and a hydraulic jack in it. Uh, the loading big uh, sill is not too high from the ground because it's a hatchback. Uh, we have the stepney underneath and the jack and the tools supplied by the uh, March Suzuki. So now we are in the inside of the car. Let's see what it offers. We have the knob for electronically adjusting the outside rear view mirror. This is not a retractable one. Then we have the power window switch. The driver side power window have the auto down function. No auto off function for this. Then we have this button for locking the windows. Except the driver window. Then we have the power lock and on button. This comes with the security feature of a two airbag ABS EBD. In the top end variants, we do have a door uh, speed sensing door lag, uh, lock which can lock the door uh, beyond 20 kilometers. We have, uh, uh, this is not the chrome, this is a plastically painted grab handles inside the car. Then we have the bottle holders which are large enough to accommodate a 0.75 litre bottle but the 1 litre bottle are not supposed to put here. Then we have uh, uh, remaining space to uh, place our knickknacks or uh, mobile accessories. The dash is not so cheap, this is the adequate quality we can have in this uh, budget. Uh, then we have the steering mounted audio controls. Uh, fog lamp button, headlight uh, leveler, alarm, indicators, uh, the steering is electronically power steering which has uh, a decent weight to it, it uh, doesn't feel light in city or on the highways, this is very confident inspiring. Then we have the tilt adjusting for the steering, this is not reach adjustable. Then we have the inbuilt system from the Maruti which is by the Nippon and comes with a two-year pan India warranty this is the power switch this is quite a conventional uh, unit so it uh, do have a USB 3.0 uh, auxiliary cable it don't come with uh, the Bluetooth function it have a manual controls for the AC it don't come with the automatic AC then we have a 12 volt power socket which can house power brick like this or a cigarette lighter so this is the bottle we ha do have a cup holder here but we can't house a bottle in it, it this is uh, limited for coke cans and uh, little uh, beverages then we have the gear lever at the dashboard like the items so this is very drivable in cities then we have a little space uh, underneath the handbrake to uh, place our cell phones the 2017 cell phones can't house here. We can house uh, iPhone 7, uh, 4S or 5S here because this isn't uh, more than 5 inches in space. Then we have a fairly large glow box, a nifty place underneath the uh, co passenger seat. We do have a bottle holder on the co passenger side. We have a tray for a medicines coin. This uh, I'm having in my car now then we have a manually adjustable a day and night rear view mirror we do have a lamp this is the reading lamp and uh, this is the only reading lamp in the car so the visibility in the night in the interior after illuminating the lamp isn't so good so in the instrument cluster we have a bivergated tachometer which is very uh, sporty in nature and we do have a MID display which houses Our automator uh, let's see from here we have an automator a clock fuel gauge 
speedometer then we have a host of warning that's uh, the door is opening uh, the car is not on so the electronic power steering is not on there's the service switch the seat belt warning the seat belt warning comes with uh, for the driver side only uh, then we have this mode and uh, the reset button we have two trip meters a and b then we have a fuel consumption on the go then we have the overall average and the range and the autometer again so these were all about the front seats let's come to the back seat and see how uh, the front seat is adjusted for my height for my height reference is 5.7 uh, 5 feet and this is a heavily built car it weighs around 1150 kilograms so the diesel rumble is very nice you feel that you are in a big SUV the door shuts well so I have adjusted the front seat for my height and now the seats are uh, positioned well and the all-around visibility is very good because uh, the uh, window lines are just starting from the biceps the in and out is very good even if you are having uh, old pe uh, passengers the uh, headroom is not in the case with the Ritz and the Vagana because these are the uh, tall boy designs in a uh, knee room I have a uh, 0.6 feet remaining so even if you are six feet tall you won't be in trouble in the knee room section we have a place below the front seats to stretch a leg the rear is not reclining this is a well position so you would have a comfortable ride over long journeys the rear is split in 60 40 to extend the boot capacity we have a transmission tunnel here that's not too huge and this isn't a, a white car at the back so we can't house three adults but two adults and a child is well suited and even if you are uh, less than 60 kgs or 55 kgs then you can sit three adults at the back we don't come it don't come with any armrest at the front or the rear this is the armrest i'm having this is the aftermarket armrest we don't have any bottle holders from the company in the ridge and there is no update for this uh, that too it comes with a grab, hand, uh, grab handle for the passengers it don't come with any grab handle for the driver the other uh, ribs come with the fabric upholstery this is the leather upholstery which i have done from the aftermarket in the security section we have dual airbags in the top end variants i am only uh, telling about the top end variants and then we have the abs ebd no traction control then we have the seat belts our shoulder adjustable seat belts at the rear we have the three seat belts and the middle we had the lap belt this is the lap belt which checks your lap only so this was all about the security features and the interior now it's time for the pros and cons the major pro would be the space inside this is a small car in exterior dimension but it do have a very large space inside the power the torque it has 74 bhp in the diesel and 190 newton meters of torque that is very talky along with overall the uh, rev band uh, then we have the handling this is electronic power steering which is well weighted and in the business the maruti have the best steering in the class the i20 is very light the apollo is not for the city condition this uh, that's only for the highways and then we have the fuel consumption according to the air ai claim the maruti suzuki figures that's 23 but in the city conditions and a 70 percent in the city 30 percent on the highway i'm having 18 as a fuel consumption then the visibility the visibility all around visibility is very good as i said you earlier the window lines come through your biceps and the seats are positioned high from the ground the another pro would be the headroom as this is a tall boy design the knee room the boot space now it's time for the cons the major con would be the sixth gear it don't come with the sixth gear so the engine flexibility is not so good the refinement the refinement is not up to the mark as we uh, you drive the polo or the i20 back to back with the ritz you would find the ritz and the swift are not refined as them as much the another one would be the rear parking camera and sensor it don't come with any rear parking camera and sensor from the company and this is a hatchback which uh, the suspension setup is on the softer side so it is not as planted as the polo so these were all about the uh, review and the pros and cons so do subscribe like and share for more videos i will later upload a specific video for must to have accessories in ritz and swift or any car up to 10 lakh bracket for any queries or a question related to the cars and the techs write in the comment below thank you